Hey, good morning. I wanted to get back to Hebrews 6 a little bit because I think it's really helpful. I think it really, it really helps us process the situation when we see people turned turned away, turned back from what we are saying, which is the obedience of faith. To hear the one who speaks, and that's really, Hebrews is a beautiful book. And it used to scare me. I used to be terrified of the book of Hebrews. I used to be terrified of the word. And all over the place. I was scared of lots of books. Especially Hebrews. There's verses in Hebrews that messed me up. You know, one that really that scared me like trampling if we continue to sin willfully or you know how much sore punishment do you think he would be found worthy who is trodden underfoot these verses just absolutely were torture to me Lest there be any profane person among you like Esau, who, though he sought repentance with tears, could not find it, right? These are verses that used to just absolutely do a number on me. And I'd hear them all the time in the church I was going to, Reformed Church. So, but at that point, I never understood what Hebrews is about. I couldn't get a grip on the on on the on the book as a whole. It was just fiery darts that were pulled out and thrust right into my right into my uncovered head. I didn't know how to hide in Christ. The helmet of salvation. These verses. They were an undoing for me. But now I'm starting to I know what Hebrews is about. It's about hearing Jesus. And what does he say? It's about the, the word. Which is now seated on the throne. The ascended Christ. And that's... He speaks a word of comfort which comes to us and becomes life in us. So Hebrews 6. It's about obedience of faith. And he starts off by saying, Let us not let, let us go forward into maturity, right? to perfection that's the idea maturity and this concept of, of maturity a mature obedience is centered on having a conscience that's been purged from an evil heart doesn't go back to the deadness of ritual. This is something that we get more and more clear on. 
rather than going and finding a way to please God, we look to Jesus as God's complete pleasure in us. Jesus pleases the Father. It's not about whether I keep a commandment that pleases Him or break a commandment that displeases Him. No, the pleasure of the Father is Jesus Christ, and He lives in me. So, as Jesus is in me, that's what the Father sees. And so the obedience now to the, is to the Word, and it's to hear the Word. And to believe it. It's the obedience of faith. So he talks about this in Hebrews 6. And he says, let's not go back to the principal doctrine. The principles of the doctrine of Christ. The foundation. And the first thing that he lists is so important. Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Repentance from dead works. That would be doing anything. Anything. In natural strength. To please God. You're just working. You're working for Him. Instead of being a son who is fellowshipping. So we continue to hear the word of salvation and come near with full assurance of faith that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all our sins and that the the life of Jesus it doesn't bring us into wrath it doesn't bring us into bondage or fear the father's pleasure is with the son and we become sons by the spirit of his son crying out Abba Father So to stay far off and to not hear is to miss the principal found the, the foundation of the principal doctrines of Christ. To go back to dead works. That is what we're called out of. We're called into a new and living way not according to works. And so he lists, you know, we're not going to lay a foundation. We're going on to maturity. We're going to perfection. The maturing. So he lists baptisms. And you know, that's, that's really, we've all been baptized into Christ. By the Spirit, we've been baptized into Christ. This is not another dead work. This is something deeper. I'm dead. I'm dead. And you know, it's just, it's, it's linked so closely to repentance from dead works. Baptism. There's nothing I need to do. I've died with Christ. I've been circumcised from the flesh. And I've been raised to newness of life. Baptisms. And that's what baptisms to represent when we physically do a baptism. And the laying on of hands. And I really see the laying on of hands as gifts and calls to ministry. And I 
get that from some of Paul's writings in, you know, in Corinthians and and to Timothy. And those are not according to, and those are not for, those are for building up of the body. To encourage one another. And to see Christ. To put Christ at, at, to turn everyone's eyes to Jesus. Not to, and all these things, if you don't get repentance from dead works right, and also, you know, the doctrine of resurrections, if you don't get these, if you don't get the first one right, repentance from dead works, every single one of these things will seem like a duty, something that you should do. You should do it. Or maybe you have to do it. But that's not the case. It's just not the case. You have to keep the dead works. The first faith towards God. Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. So then it says, for it's impossible for those who have been enlightened and tasted of the heavenly gift. And fallen away to be restored unto repentance it's the same concept you can't we can't turn anybody back to repentance from dead works once they've tasted so actually this is encouraging this is about believers when believers and so some of these warnings are very encouraging when you get grace understood and you understand what repentance from dead works is. We see that once people have tasted of the goodness and the age to come, and they're made to drink of the Spirit, we can't turn them back. We can't bring them to repentance. We can't. It's impossible for us. We cannot bring them back to repentance from dead works. They, you can't stop it. It's got to run its course. And it's something that we shouldn't we shouldn't be in fellowship. I mean, we strike a balance. We try to find a balance with those who have a profession of it is not by works but it's by faith but yet are so set on pleasing God in natural strength and by keeping commandments it's like the Galatians it is a frustration to the grace of God it is a it's a labor for our soul to try and bring people back to repentance from dead works but it's impossible for us to bring them to repentance the lord has got to be the one who does it which oftentimes means shipwreck so it's not bad to, to, to know, okay, that person's got to run that little course. They got to run aground. 
because otherwise they won't get it. They won't get to see grace. They'll stay far off, but God is faithful and he can do what we can't. He can bring them to an end of themselves. And this is discipline that they would hear him who speaks the obedience of faith. It's like the Israelites when they were in the desert. And I've used this example plenty of times, but when they came out of Egypt and were in the wilderness, the national type of salvation was completed. They had the Passover, which rep represents trusting in the blood and they passed through the Red Sea, which represents baptism. And I think um, I think Peter says that. Maybe Peter. He might be, he might have talked about Noah. I'm not sure. He, but I think Peter talks about baptized into Moses. It's it's probably Paul though. So dying in Jesus Christ. That's the picture. You've died and you've been raised to newness of life. But now there's the period of testing in the wilderness and the discipline bringing you from being far off to coming near with full assurance. And many of them in the desert, you know, they had the evil report they didn't believe they could go into the land. And he says, see that you're not like the disobedient children, those that were in the wilderness, that you don't harden your hearts. When they were in the wilderness, they did not believe that God would bring them into rest, bring them into the promised land. And so they hardened their hearts. They did not believe. Just simply. And they began to complain against what God had done for them. That he, that his salvation had only brought them out to die. And this is something that I've experienced and something I think every, every Christian experiences to some degree where we are brought out and saved. And we know we're saved. And it's wonderful. But then we find ourselves thirsty and in the desert and there's no fruit. And we think that well I thought I, re I thought everything was good. I thought I was saved. And then we get, begin to complain against the salvation that we've already received. And what God does is he sends serpents to bite. Fiery serpents. And we see this today. The people who are in absolute turmoil over the contradiction of being saved and yet being barren and fruitless without having the victory, without enjoying the rest. And they haven't believed the good report. So fiery ser serpents begin to, b to bite them and I believe this is how God brings them unto repentance from dead works. These serpents bite until the people begin to die and they see that they're hopeless. And Moses lifts up the bronze serpent so that if anybody would look, they would be saved. For them, they were saved as a nation already. But we're talking about a physical salvation. It's a type. 
And I think this really applies to us and our soul. We've been saved. Spiritually, we're saved. But today, if we're going to experience his rest, it needs to be childlike. Just looking up at the bronze serpent saying, I have nothing else. I have nothing else. And just looking to our salvation, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So when you see people get bit by snakes, don't be heartbroken. I mean, it is heartbreaking. You want to see them in rest. But know that it's not something that we can do. We can't bring them to repentance from dead works. They've already tasted. They have to be brought to an end of themselves. And that means they have to be bitten by serpents. And Jesus will continue to be lifted up that when they finally realize they can't do anything, He's there. He's there in mercy, just waiting for that look. Just waiting for that look, that, that childlike faith, that simple faith that just looks. So Hebrews 6, it's a stern warning against not hard earning your heart and hearing him who speaks. It's about maturity. It's about growing into maturity, returning back to the first faith, that simple look, recognizing your salvation. It's bringing people to assurance. And it takes God doing a miracle. And he's faithful. He's faithful. His word does not return void. So be encouraged. Take care for nothing. Enjoy looking to Jesus. And remember, remember your salvation. Take confidence in the blood and know that he didn't bring anybody out to die. But it's the discipline, it's testing. Not about sin. Not about repentance from sin. About repentance from dead works and hearing the word of salvation. The word of life. Hearing what Jesus says about them. Okay, kind of a longer one. I hope that ministers to your heart, comforts you. It is a comforting word. It's a super comforting, comforting word. Right in one of the most difficult passages that the enemy loves to steal. Jesus loves you and he loves those that are his he loved the whole world so much how much more being justified by his grace by his blood and being raised into his life will he deliver us from wrath he does it for mercy because he's good <laughs>